I'm doing whatever now. Ain't got no time to fight. I'm talking way too loud. And if you don't like the sound, you could just tune it out. Who you rooting for? They say whatever team that'll win. I say cool, cause it's gonna be whichever one. Hello, SL family, and welcome back. And if you are stopping by for the first time, I want to extend a warm welcome and thank you for clicking on today's video. Well, family, I know it feels like deja vu. That's exactly how I feel too. Trust me, it's not. This time, it's my laundry room. I am facing the same issue. Say it with me, everyone. Thermofoil, thermofoil, thermofoil. Well, so many changes are happening in my laundry room from the ceiling to the floor. My laundry room is outdated and it needs to be renovated, restored, modernized. And before I can achieve the vision I have for this laundry room, I have to remove the thermofoil from the cabinets and the cabinet doors. I will be painting the cabinets in Tricorn Black by Sherm William. I found two blogs um, on the internet that provided step-by-step -step instructions how to paint your faucet and paint your tile floors. Yes, I said paint your tile floors. I will be doing that. I will be sharing it with you. I also will be painting my outdated backsplash and installing a new light fixture to tie it all together. I feel these small changes will make such a big difference and give this space a more modern look and feel. But most important, cost effective. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my last video. I renovated my master bathroom cabinets and added custom frames around the mirror because my mirror was starting to rot. Again, thank you all for the love and support you showed me. If you missed that video, I will have it listed in the description box below. My laundry room over the past year has been through a lot. It started with our dryer going out. My husband was able to fix it. And then within a couple of months, the washing machine would go out on a blink. Well, thank goodness Mark is pretty handy. He ordered the parts and he fixed the machine himself. I felt like we were cursed because too many things were breaking down around the house at the same time. You know that old cliche saying, if it ain't one thing, it's another. It's always something, I tell you. As our home project starts to mount up, I start thinking how I can get these home projects done, you know, cost effective as possible. So I will be doing several DIYs in our home. And the, the big ticket items, definitely we're going to contract those out. So if you are interested in seeing some DIYs and home decor and home decorating, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and make sure your notification bell is turned on. I 
Well, it's getting late, but I wanted to um, get this sink clean. It's no way I could overlook a dirty sink and just leave it like this. I did it a little backwards, but at least when I do return to this space to start working, the sink is not dirty. I had a subscriber reach out to me and she wanted to know why am I using the denature alcohol versus just going ahead and just light sand it off. I explained to her that the um, MDF board starts with a sawdust and shaving and all those little bits and pieces of wood that are created as a byproduct and once it's dehydrated those wood fibers are then mixed with resin and wax and formed into panels under high heat and intense pressure and those panels are compressed and become rigid with a hard shell that is the reason we do not want to disturb the um the boards and i found this in happening also in my laundry room directly underneath the sink it has gotten some moisture there and i see it starting to crumble right at the top lid right up there there's a board directly behind it underneath the lip of the sink that i noticed was starting to crumble so this is the reason why you cannot do heavy sanding and that's why I keep expressing, expressing light sanding.
I am lightly going over the boards, making sure that I just rough it up enough. That way my primer and paint will stick. As you can see it's starting to get dark outside but that's okay I'm gonna go ahead and get the primer on that way it can sit overnight and I only will be adding one coat I found another area the fiber boards were breaking down right there on the lips so I'm just adding a coat of primer to act as paint because I will not be painting the inside. I switched things up just a little bit I said you know what Shauna you better get on outside before it get completely dark and let's go ahead and paint the doors because I took them off and I had them sitting outside I was like all right let's go ahead and knock this out real quick and it was only uh, a total of four doors that I needed to do so I got that primer on there and then I brought them back inside so that they can dry in my um, patio room and then you'll see me go back into the laundry room to finish up around the, the um, utility sink. I am back inside the laundry room. I'm gonna knock out this sideboard as well as the board that's directly in front of the utility sink. Guys, this is a Friday night after I got off from work and I am tired. So I'm gonna call it a night on this um, part. That's why I want to make sure I get this on, let it sit overnight. And then on Saturday, I will wake up and I'll get started all over again. Okay, it is um, another day. It's Saturday and last night I worked 
on a lot of stuff. I um, primed all the cabinet doors as well as the cabinet sides and the trims as well. I also did here, I did that as well. You see that right there? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have my, um, what do I, I have the cabinet doors sitting in the patio room. So we're gonna go over there. Let's go to that area. And I wanna show you what I did. So here we go. All right, so if you look right here, these are the cabinet doors. They are all primed and excuse that noise. Of course, when I come out, my neighbor's coming up the, the street, should I say. So these are the cabinet doors and it was only four. So I got them all primed and they're dry. They dried overnight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the first coat of paint. I have my table already set up outside on the deck and once I'm done, I'll, let me stop chatting. Let's go ahead and let's paint these cabinet doors. It's a beautiful day here in Georgia. The sun is shining. It's the perfect time to be outside and paint. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same paint that I used in the master bathroom when I painted my cabinets. It's the uh, Sherwin, it's by Sherwin Williams and the color is called Tricorn, which is a beautiful black. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that same. I didn't have to spend any extra money. I purchased a gallon of paint and I still have a, more than a half a gallon left. So this was a, a no spin on painting my cabinets because I already had it from a previous project. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. What I decided to do is to go ahead and add the first coat of paint, let that dry, and then I will come back to it. I'm going to go ahead and go in back into the laundry room and I am going to start on spray painting my faucet. I thought that would be another cost effective way for me to go ahead and give that an update without moving any of the plumbing because I must tell you that plumbing was in there pretty good and I didn't want to disturb it and then have some more issues on my hand that I truly don't need. So I found a blog and it's called averageinspired.com and her name is Brie and she shared how she did her tub fixtures. So if she can do her tub fixtures, I was like, well, this is a faucet too. I should be able to do this faucet. So I was like, okay, I'm going to follow her steps. She said it was proven. She, you know, really took these steps of making sure she clean it. And um, after she cleaned it, then she went on and she sanded it. And then she started spray painting. But she went and used two different types of paint. One was a um, by Rust-Oleum. It was the primer. And that one was really nice. Uh, it's called the Rust-Oleum Spray Automotive Primer. And then she used another one that was called Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Custom. All right, so I have now prepped my area that I am going to go ahead and spray paint this area. So I put plastic all around. So hopefully it will catch it that way. It will blow in that way. And I'm protecting everything. So see how it is? Perfect. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use these two. I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer. It's in gray. And then I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Custom Shop. I'm going to use that as my color in black. So everything is all prepped. I got it really good um, around here. These areas, see that right there? I got it pretty good. And back there, 
protecting everything and all of the plastic everywhere so I don't mess up anything. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get closer. Yeah, yeah. Come a little bit closer. Yeah. I did turn the water off underneath the sink to make sure no water will drip just in case if I accidentally hit any of the handles. And one of the things that um, the lady in mentioned in her blog was that she said this primer is going to dry real fast. And she was very um, right on point with that. So I still, even though it dried fast, I let it sit for me about 10, 15 minutes. And then I went on and I added the black matte. I am going to now apply this here um, Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Custom Shop. It's in black. I'm going to go ahead and um, apply it. It's getting dry. It really dries fast. So let me go ahead, put this on a tripod, and I'm going to show you how I spray paint this. Okay? I remember reading in her blog, she said, this is where all the magic really starts to happen. And she is right. She says she spray painted the faucet and her fixtures with that Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Custom Shop. And she also used the color black as I am. She says she applied a light coat to everything and recoated almost immediately. Honestly, it looks really good. Tell me what you think. This looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this to dry and I'm going to see if I need to add another coat. I decided to go ahead and start painting my cabinets while um, the cabinet doors as well as the um, faucet was drying. I was like, you know what? I need to multitask here and get things done because I need to make sure I make very good use of my Saturday. After I finished painting the upper cabinets, I looked at the faucet and I realized it really doesn't need a, another coat. It really coated very well and I don't want to overspray it and make it mess up. It looks good to me, so I'm going to go and rock with it the way it is right now. So I decided I'll go ahead and start painting this particular cabinet, the one that's with the utility sink. And I'm just going to go ahead and get the first coat of paint on that as well and just make my way around. I'll, I did this off camera where I went to go outside again and add another coat of paint to the cabinet doors. And then after I did that, I came back in and I gave another coat of paint into here in the uh, laundry room. And then I had another bright idea. I said, wow, Shauna, I think we need to go ahead and paint the floor. So guess what your girl did? I thought about this. I went online. I got some little ideas. I was like, okay. I read another um, article and from another blogger, which um, she did her, her floors. And I was really impressed with it. I was like, okay. Another one is called MissAshleyFrench.com. She did a great job with... Um, using the Rust-Oleum paint 
and she painted her floors and I was like okay Rust-Oleum is definitely you know the bomb for right now in my um, laundry room I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that particular kit it is a kit it's a two-part kit um, the first part is where you use the actual paint and then the second part is where you will um, go ahead and put the coat over it once you have put all your paint on so you girl headed on over to Home Depot and I went into the paint aisle and I found what I was looking for and I was really impressed that I was able to find it. I actually went online to make sure my store had it and they said they did. So I was like, okay, we're gonna take a ride up there. And I just went on inside and I, as I said, I found that particular paint. I've got this feeling. I'm feeling you could be the one. I see no reason. Why I should ever let you go mm. Let's see That one right there Yeah Which one is that? That's about the lightest That one? Yeah Pearl gray We're gonna go with a pearl gray then All right. me Don't wanna wake up no, I don't wanna wake up I don't wanna wake up Without you Baby without Okay, I have made it back home and I have the kit and I'm really going to go ahead and do it. I was like, you can do this. If you can paint some cabinets, you can paint a floor. And I thought my floor needed an update. I was getting really tired of this um, brownish, tannish, whatever color the floors are. I was getting tired of that. So, as I said, it does come in a two-part um, kit. The first bottle I held up, that's the cleaner. It wants you to clean the floor with that. And then you have the paint. And then this one here is the sealer. It's the top coat that you put on your floor. So let's go ahead and let's get set up. getting ready to do the floor I have my socks so I'm gonna put my socks on they're clean that way I don't trap any dirt in here when I'm leaving out I also have a couple of cleaning cloths I have a scrub brush as well and my gloves I also have two um, pans of water one for the cleaning solution and the other one for me to clean up fresh water. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I did take a vacuum cleaner over the floor before and I did that off camera. So just to cut time down. So what I'm doing is I'm using the cleaner that came inside the kit and I'm scrubbing the floor, making sure I get into the grooves of the grout all around the perimeter, making sure that I get up any type of um, debris or as well as anything that may have um, dried on the floor because things have dropped on that floor and I wipe it up. So I just wanna make sure whatever is on the floor, it's removed so when I spread the paint, it's going to stick because you do not have to use any type of primer according to the box. Make sure if you're interested in doing this, you read. I did a lot of um, research. I was reading a lot of blogs. I even went to Rust-Oleum's website. I read their information. They have a um, how to do things, what, the instructions, that's what it's called, online as well as inside the box. I wanted to make sure that when I do this, that I am going to get the best results possible. So tell me what I'm supposed to do just to be alright. Girl, you got me thinking. 
After the floor dry, I came back in here and I made sure I vacuumed the floor again because I want to make sure no particles are on the floor from the rags that I was using to dry the floor or even from the bristles. You just don't know. So make sure you go back over it again once it dries before you add your paint. Off camera, I went around the perimeter of my baseboards as well as the door jams and the threshold going over into the hallway. I made sure that I put this tape around it to protect everything. I did not want anything to mess up. So once I did that, I am now ready. I'm sharing some photos of the brush and the rollers that I have. I got a um, 3 8 nap roller as well as a quarter inch um, nap roller. And I made sure that I got them both in microfiber, lint free. I want to make sure I get the best job. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour the base coat, which is the paint, into my tray so I can go ahead and start rolling. I also have my, um, I, I, I guess the, the brush there. And what they want you to do is take your paintbrush and go around the perimeter first, the edges. Now, what you want to make sure you do is when you go around this, map your way so that you'll know that you do not paint yourself in a box. So I'm going around the perimeter and I have a little system. So I'm going from left to right and I'm doing two to three tiles at a time and then I will make my way around. I do not want to get myself trapped in there. So definitely make sure when you're doing this that you map this out so that you don't paint yourself in a box and you can't get out. Um, so p applying it is real simple and easy. It went on very well. I was like, okay, I can handle this. I'm making sure that I take that paintbrush and I'm getting into the grout lines because I want to make sure those grout lines are covered. And then I will take my, um, my nap roller and I am going to go ahead and roll and it will tell you exactly um, I'm using the 3 8 nap right now on the floor for all of the base paint and then for the quarter nap I use that one to add the sealer on 
and I'm just taking my time and going around the perimeter and making sure that I rub that in pretty good with the first coat. I was reading on, on these different blogs that they were saying, oh, one coat is enough. Well, it, it was starting to look like it was enough to do one coat, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it and see how it looks. We're gonna put that one coat on there and test it out and let's see. So here we are. See, I'm moving to another section, moving to my right. That way I don't box myself in taking time going through each and every grout line making sure that i outline it real good and then i take the nap roller and just roll on the paint to cover up everything else and that's the way you do it it's really simple and easy but you just have to take your time don't be in a rush and i highly recommend some knee pads Now, I have covered the entire floor with the base coat, and per the instructions, you are to allow this to sit and dry for six hours. Well, I was tired after doing all this. I knew I was not coming back to do anything else. It's gonna sit for the night. So I wanted to share with you a hack that I saw on IG, and it was this how to, um, you know, preserve your brush and roller if you're not finished with it. I didn't want to clean the paint out because I had still had some good paint on there. So what I'm doing is I'm using some clean and I'm going to go ahead and take my time and wrap it nice and neat and tight and seal in the moisture. And that's what you do. And you can, you don't have to wash your, um, your roller out. Isn't that a unique way? And I'm going to take that same concept and use it for my um, brush, my paintbrush. Just take it, that clean wrap, and wrap it nice and neat and tight. And that way, it keeps it moist and you don't have to wash it out. And there's still good paint on there that I can use for when I'm getting ready to add the second coat, which is going to be the next day. So see how you do that? And then I'm gonna take some um, aluminum foil and I'm going to cover my tray up that has that paint in there. I don't want that to go to waste and it preserves it. Oh my God, I found these hacks and I'm loving them. So I'm sharing them with you and hopefully you can be able to use them as well. If you have an IG account, why don't you give your girl a follow at Florida Girl Living in a Georgia World. I'd love to have you over there. I do stories and reels and behind the scene footage. Well, it's the next day and it is time to take a look at the floor. It looks pretty good, but I do see some areas where I am definitely going to go ahead and add a second coat. If you look right here and right here, you can see some areas. So I definitely will be taking care of that and add another coat of paint. Way, yeah. 
I have everything all set up. Here's my tray with that paint there. See, it, it kept it very good, it looks good there. And um, there's my little roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and first, before I um, do this, I'm gonna put my socks on and then I'm going to take my Swifter and I am going to Swift the floor just to make sure there's no dust bunnies on the floor. And I'm glad I followed those rules. They had it in there to, you know, wipe down, you know, it softly. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I did find some dust on it, um, on the floor. It came on the uh, Swifter. So this definitely worked out and I'm glad I did this step here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the second coat of the um, paint to the floor. And this really did a great job of covering the floor. So it that second coat gave me the coverage that I need. One of the things I did forget to tell you is that that little can that they give you, it covers 100 square feet. And I still had paint left over from um, doing this as well. Eight hours have gone by after I put the second coat of paint on. So what I'm doing now is taking the Swifter again and I'm just gonna go ahead and just go over it lightly before I add the top coat, which is the sealer. And I'm using that 1 4th nap roller for that. And it just glides on real good. And I'm telling you, this really turned out okay. It's time consuming. But I understand the steps that you have to go through to get the results that you want. When you apply the top coat, it's going to look milky and it goes on light and thin. And according to the instructions, it says that you should allow it to dry for 24 hours and then it will take a full seven days for it to fully cure. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I did. I did 48 hours before I start even doing any light foot traffic on it. And then before we put our large heavy items of furniture, what it says, it says seven days, we did 10 days. I just was in no rush. I really wanted this to cure and hold up for me.
find something special for you And now you got me thinking till the sun comes up Daylight in my mind is dreaming Here's some footage of me finish adding the top coat to the tile and I'm going to allow it to um, cure for, it says 24 but I did 48 and now um, it has dried. I am back in here walking on the tile only in socks. So I wanted to give my backsplash a refresh my husband DIY this a few years ago and trust me I was so happy to have a backsplash I didn't care about the color of the tile but I don't understand why he put the brown but at this that's okay we're gonna get past that matter of fact I'm getting ready to tell it bye Felicia <laughs> and um, I'm using the same um, floor tile um, covering that I used on the floor I had some extra and I didn't want to um, throw it away I was like let me use it on this and I took the same concept I used the same solution to clean it with you know first and then I took the paint and I went on and I started painting the tile and what I've noticed it was definitely giving it the coverage um, this is definitely just the first coat and look how it's covering up that brown and when I add um, the second coat it's definitely going to get rid of it I think I put maybe about three or four I was really trying to use up that paint so you're going to see me going back and forth over it several times now one thing that I did notice when I was um, painting the tile I'm thinking that when I'm painting those grout lines, I'm thinking that was grout, but it wasn't. It kept giving openings. Found out the grout had broke down, so it was openings in the grout in those lines, not the grout, but the in the lines. So I told Mark, I said, I don't know what's going on, but I can't get this to close. It just keep popping open. He said the grout broke down, baby. It broke down. So he said, just continue to keep painting. We're going to paint it. He said, if I've done this before, we're going to use the silicone caulk and we're going to go ahead. Once that paint dry, we're going to go ahead and add some of that silicone paint. I mean, caulk on top of it to close up those gaps. Genius. And that really helped and worked. So just keep watching. You'll see. I don't recommend you doing it in this step, but that was all I could do after I had already done put it on the paint on. I had to allow the paint to dry so I can add that caulk. So I'm showing you an up close picture of the tile so that you can see what I'm talking about where the grout broke down and you can see the opening spaces where the paint just will not stick. So what we did, we allowed this to sit for six hours just like I, if I was doing the floor. I just let it sit for six hours and then after that Mark came on in and he went on and started adding the silicone grout uh, silicone grout to it and that way he filled in all those open gaps we um you'll see how it, it just looks so much better once he did that i don't recommend you do it this way but i had no choice based on what i found out after i had them put the paint on there thinking the grout was there and it wasn't so eight hours later i was able to come back and we went on and I just added another coat of paint on top of that and it really worked I mean this time every the paint was sticking it was going into the um, the grout lines and it was working look how I'm just smoothing that over it's really working so I as I said I had no other choice I found out what I found out a little too late but it all worked out 
at the end and it turned out great. I'm going to go ahead and add the final coat, which is the clear sealant that's going to seal this um, paint job together. And I am very pleased with it. I like the outcome. And I definitely took this outdated backsplash to another level. It is more modern, updated, and it just blends. I'm very pleased with all the projects that I did in here to create this look that um, I have, it really turned out nice. Didn't want to overdo it, just give it a new update by making a few changes. That's all I had to do, make a few changes. And I think I have a really nice um, laundry room. The last and final update was my lighting. I took out this old build a grade brown um, ceiling light and I found a really nice black modern one from Lowe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damaged. One man's trash is another man. So what I want to do is just take you back and remind you where we started from. I had these thermal foil that is wrapped on the cabinets that where it's falling off and it's chipping and coming loose. They are all white. It's outdated. And I just need to give this space a new look. So we went from white cabinets to black cabinets. And also don't forget we have the backsplash where I went on and I just did the backsplash over again removing all that brown towel and made it all cohesive and flowing together and also as well as the floor I went on and I painted the floor so that the floor don't look like this anymore it just looks fresh new and updated now Here's a view of the laundry room without anything in it. I just wanted to let you see it without anything in it. And then now we will go to the after so you can see how I decorate it. I am in awe every time I walk into the laundry room. I had a vision. I was a little afraid, but I took fear out of the equation and I executed. I love this little setup. This is my new Mika small pot. I have one in a large size as well. It's by Anthropology. I'll make sure I put it in the description box. Make sure you um, purchase only when it's on sale. Look how my beautiful black um, faucet turned out I'm very pleased with that I mean look at it it just really turned out great and I just love the little small detail accessories that I have placed around on that um, noodle board uh, Mark made that for me a couple years ago and um, I use it to fold clothes on so I love how I can decorate it when it's not in use and my cabinets just turned out beautiful. I love how they turned out. I, I, I just am in love. Now this particular rug or runner came from Big Lots and you have to purchase it online. I fell in love with the details, especially the diamond 
black diamonds. Oh my gosh, just beautiful. I just knew it would just set it off in the um, laundry room and that's why I purchased it. And it just goes and flows perfect with my decor. Now, these black cabinets on the wall turned out great. I am loving my little laundry bar. Look at that. I love how I have that set up. Now, what I did, um, I did organize inside. I found some clear acrylic containers at Target in the dollar spot. And what I did was I just went and rearranged everything so I can be able to see all of my stuff. I did the same thing underneath the uh, utility sink because I have an overflow of stuff and I just keep buying and I can't see what I have. This would definitely help cut that down. And um, I just want to take this time to thank you so much for supporting my channel. And if you enjoyed the laundry room renovation video and it inspired you, please like and share with your family and friends. I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye. Space suit on, can't breathe this air TNT going off in here Ain't we up there? Cause you always wanna touch me My 